Uh, namaste, this is Rishikesh Writings and we are with the spiritual master from Canada, John D. Reuter. Namaste and uh, Leanne. Leanne from Canada, Edmonton. Namaste, welcome both of you in Rishikesh. Thank you. So John, how is uh, this journey start in life? You come into the spirituality and share this uh, gift which you got from the divine. It was a very unexpected, unusual occurrence uh, within a, a very normal circumstance where I'm just standing alone in my house but deeply wondering is there more to reality more than anything I've experienced anything I've known is there more than myself more than others is there something way beyond everything that I'm used to and I just very deeply wondered that and as soon as I wondered I knew and then as soon as I knew I turned into it so then it completely overtook everything inside and overtook my perception of everything outside and it was all swirling moving alive as one thing and the same and completely other than anything I've ever known. So like in India when uh, we moving toward the spiritual path so we have a masters like the teachers who guide us so is there any master or teacher behind you who guide you in the spirituality or it's it's a self exploration for you in the life it wasn't a self exploration it was like a magical out of nowhere thing that just happened inside of me and i went into it it's like i, I walked into that river the river took me and I was gone and uh, with us men Helen Leon. Leon, Leon also with us uh, Leon how do you met the John and the start the support his life journey and the wisdom which he have it I met him when I first heard that there is a very special teacher in Germany and I was living in Germany and um, I went to and I also didn't have a path I was not looking for a teacher um, and I saw his uh, flyer and uh, it was about uh, if you would be willing to give up everything that's yours in your life and this something like that for, for truth and when I read that it inside of me it was a kind of a, oh my god what is that and explosion and, and so I started going to the meetings that's how I met then you start this magical journey and start growing this life um, John in India we uh, when we talk about self so we says uh, we are we are not a body we are a soul in the West so first they talk about the self like a mind so how do you correlated this both both theory in East and West we really are is unrecognizable to anything that we can think, feel, imagine, touch, appreciate through our senses, appreciate through our entire sense of reality around us, that if we use all of that to comprehend, to try and comprehend what we really are, it's incomprehensible. To come into what we really are is then without our ideas, our experiences, our past, any sense through our senses and through our mind, through our thinking, our feeling, our will and our emotions, through anything that we've ever learned, without any of that, that we are just quiet. 
So what is not all of that is what you are. So without your whole sense of reality, without all of that, you are. So your whole experience of reality and yourself and this world and your life through all of your senses and your mind, that's like clothing on you. And it's easy because you are formless and like invisible, unrecognizable. You can only relate to your movement through these clothes that are on you. So as soon as you move, you can see your clothing moving. And then very quickly you identify with your experience of the clothing, your five senses of all of that movement, and then you get lost into that and you forget you. That's a beautiful explanation. <laughs> and have you ever thought about it that you will come to India and Rishikesh in the life? I thought about it when people started to invite me. To come to India. So, so how important India is in your life? Like, how you see the India with with your life? Like transformations or journey. In India, I'm at home in Edmonton. I'm at home in Canada. I'm at home. In India, I'm at home in a hotel, I'm at home in our home. And in a very real way, it's just very flowy and even, and in a sense, all the same. It just, there are different characteristics to the experience of that in India than in Canada. And I really enjoy the difference of those characteristics. So, what are those differences uh, you uh, you would like to would you like to share? The, what are the differences you found in Canada and India? Canada is sort of sweetly more organized, cleaner. Okay. India is excitingly disorganized, messier and getting into the mess and the color, the vibrancy of India is, stands on its own and it's very different from being in Canada. So it makes India, you mean to say India, courage to live a more beautiful life, like explore, help explore. It, India in its characteristics invites a different kind of movement as soon as you're in it than in than being in Canada. Both are very invitational, but the invitations are very different. Well we've talked about the people because they're not they're not spoiled. They're not spoiled. There's still lots of innocence and and sweetness and open heartedness that uh, it's very, very nice to. Res it's a wonderful response to to what he is. Yeah. And what you both think about the Rishikesh? Rishikesh is sort of excitingly, strangely put together. There's hills everywhere, and all the houses just are built all over the hill, all over the place, the roads are not making any sense, which gives it a very magical appeal. So, if you talk about the best memories of last year or this year, this year is it's, it's still running, but the best memories of Rishikesh in your journey? You would like to appreciate or you, you can, you would like to thank for that, that journey. The smile that I see in the Indians, in you. <laughs> the, 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 the smile has, your smile has an, 
delightful, refreshing kind of innocence. It's like a, a sprinkly happiness that just comes out. It doesn't have the level of performance that smiles can tend to be more so in the West. Yeah, we the find, we here, find reason here in India every time, so a smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so without, even without any purpose, we smile to everybody else. Like when we are walking on the street and uh, even in the somebody home and friend circle, we just, we, we don't have to find a reason. We just say, okay, let's bump it to the place and have a smile and uh, fun together. Hey, are you part Indian? <laughs> and uh, how about your li uh, the childhood journey? Uh, we would like to hear about your how how was you and uh, like this journey start? <laughs> like childhood, how, how was what kind of uh, child you are? Like it's uh, indigo or uh, like more um, friendly? I was extremely curious and adventurous. So you find always adventure in your life? Yes. And what do you think about the humanity? At this moment we are passing through many changes like um, in Sweden, there is a Greta Berg, a small, small girl who is uh, talking about the environmental changes. The many part of the world you see there is a <coughs> much ups and down of the energy. And what message would you like to say to the humanity through your medium? That what matters the most in the midst of changing this changing world and difficult circumstances is to return to the heart and stay in the heart. How they will return to the heart? Uh, is there any way, a road, path, or by we will go by car or we will go by thoughts? How, how, how the people can go inside the heart? In a very simple way to relate as dearness. When someone is very dear to you, then you're relating to that person through your heart. So as soon as you realize that, no one has to be dear to you for you to be that movement inside, that dearness. And then you are that dearness toward, every, toward anyone. You are that dearness in circumstances. It's not held together by any sense of self. First is without purpose. It, first, it is just full of nurture. And that nurture starts to realize purpose in this life. One of the nicest things I've heard you say of concerning um, humanity and the state of the, the world or the state of anything is that the world doesn't have to change. You do. Nobody has to change but you. And if everybody were to take that in, then things would change. But people trying to change the world and humanity isn't going to work. So first we have to change ourselves, then things can change. First, you return through dearness, the sense and the, the quality and the depth of dearness. Through that, you return to your heart and you live being gentled and quieted in your heart, regardless of who you're with and what circumstance you're in. It's very beautiful to speak with you here in Rishikesh. 
land of the Mother Ganga, which is uh, a blessing for the India, even for the world. Thank you for being with us. Give, give, thank you for giving us a beautiful, valuable gift and a time. And I wish you come every year in Rishikesh. And it will be your second home. See you again. The Rishikesh will be your second home. <laughs> <laughs> One of our many homes. <laughs> we'll be here again. Yeah. Thank you. And Namaste, we will bring you another story. And uh, thanks for being a part of this journey. Namaste.